you won't really know what's going to happen to you. That's what makes it special. The Good Place ends by returning to the question of its very premise, what happens after we die? When the Michael Shore series opens, the characters are already dead. You're in the good place. <sighs> but throughout the series, the four humans who make up Team Cockroach keep getting the rug pulled out from under them. This is the bad place. The last time someone got enough points to get to the good place was... 521 years ago. Eventually, Eleanor, Chidi, Tahani, Jason, Michael, and Janet essentially play God and rewrite the rules of the afterlife to offer humanity a more accessible and satisfying eternal existence. Your time on Earth won't be a, a, a test that you either pass or fail, but instead a class you take, and the test will come in the afterlife. Your system's working perfectly. Millions of humans passing their tests, you know. Yet, after all those twists and turns and all their newfound wisdom and growth, they still arrive back at that primal original question. What happens once we cease to exist? Here's our take on how The Good Place, a TV show about the afterlife, ended up being about what we do here on Earth. Cool. Cool. I have some questions. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. In just four seasons, The Good Place has dealt with some small, simple problems. How to be a good person. Look, the only thing that you are concerned with is your own happiness. That's your problem. The nature of hell. Four people perfectly suited to make each other miserable. If the intention of an action is more important than the consequences. There are so many unintended consequences to well-intentioned actions. Whether people have soulmates. If soulmates do exist, they're, they're not found. They're made. Simple stuff. As it nears the end, the show's final problem is the question of heaven, or what the ideal afterlife would even look like. In the second to last episode, our central characters at last arrive in the actual good place, only to discover it's not all that great. You get here and you realize that anything's possible and you do everything and then you're done. But you still have infinity left. The fake good place of the first season, which was actually the bad place, pretended to be something close to most popular conceptions of heaven. A place that gives you exactly what you want and like, all the time forever. So welcome to eternal happiness. In the final season, we learn that the real good place is based on this same principle too. On paper, this is paradise. All your desires and needs are met, but it's infinite. And when perfection goes on forever, you become this glassy-eyed mush person. What this unsuccessful heaven needs is death. You said that every human is a little bit sad all the time because you know you're going to die. But that knowledge is what gives life meaning. Even though the idea of existing for eternity is a comforting escape from the uncertainty of not knowing what comes after death, in fact, knowing that life must end is what makes it so valuable. The way to restore meaning to the people in the good place is to let them leave. Michael creates a door that allows the residents of the good place to, whenever they're ready, after a lot of baramies, end their time as distinct beings in the universe. And this works to restore the good place's residents' mental clarity and drive, and to turn the good place into a true paradise. So what, according to the show, constitutes paradise? As cheaty voices, the ideal of heaven is really time having all the time we wish we had in this world. I think that's what the good place really is. It's not even a place, really. It's just having enough time with the people you love. All this glorious time turns the good place into the ultimate fantasy of life on Earth. Team Cockroach gets to achieve everything they've ever wanted to do. It took you more than 433,000 tries, but you just played the perfect game of Madden. And more importantly, to develop and deepen their relationships with the people who are most important to them. My last goal was to spend one meaningful day with my parents. Now I've spent thousands of them. TV endings often tend toward the ambiguous. 
Did Don Draper create the Coke ad? Did Nora really go to the other world? Is Tony Soprano dead? By contrast, the Good Place creator Michael Schur goes out of his way to give us closure here, just as he did in his last series, Parks and Recreation, which was also about a group of people, led by a pushy blonde woman, working together to improve a bureaucracy that should help the common good. We fought, scratched, and clawed to make people's lives a tiny bit better. The show's last episode followed the characters through literal decades of their lives, up to and including the death of one of their group. But the last episode of The Good Place covers, if not millions of years, a seriously long time in these characters' post-mortem experience. We can't tell exactly, since it's measured in units of baramies. Because while time on Earth moves in a straight line, time in the afterlife moves in a Jeremy Baramy. But it's probably far more time than we humans on Earth could ever conceive of. And during that time, Team Cockroach and the many other humans who find their way to the good place thanks to Chidi's more inclusive system become the best versions of themselves. Babe, you were already the most impressive person I ever met, and now you can do literally everything. Ironically, in the case of Team Cockroach, these best selves circle back to their original fake or shallow personas from before they realized their potential. Jason, waiting in nature for around 1,000 baramies to give Janet a parting gift. It was actually pretty easy to wait. I sort of just sat quietly and let my mind drift away. Thought about you and the infinity of the universe. Essentially becomes Jean Yu, the Taiwanese monk character he had to play in Michael's original neighborhood. Kinda like a monk. And perhaps his love for Janet, a nearly all-knowing being, should have been a clue that Jason did possess a monk-like spirituality within. She makes the bass drop in my heart. Tahani, who once made shows of charity on Earth to feed her vanity and status, decides to become an architect so she can truly, selflessly help people. I've spent most of my life pretending to help people. If I were an architect, I could do it for real. Chidi, the philosophy professor and morality expert, really does become the person responsible for crafting a fair system to decide the fates of all humankind. Okay, let's save humanity. Shall we? This once hopelessly indecisive waffler also concludes as the most calmly decisive person in the group. For dessert, we have to get the tiramisu. Mm. Man, Chidi Anagonye, just casually making choices. Eventually reaching a conclusion that Eleanor knows she shouldn't try to talk him out of. I love you completely and utterly. Oh, crap. But I have to go. In the first season, the fake persona Michael pretended Eleanor got switched with was someone who helped people the world had given up on. A lawyer who got innocent people off death row. You're special, Eleanor. And this is exactly what she becomes. Before Eleanor can feel complete enough to walk through the door, she has to guide those last people who haven't been covered by the new functional system. She convinces selfish, detached Mindy St. Clair, whom she sees as an earlier version of herself. But I actually think you're a version of me if I'd never met my friends. To go through the system, to stop being a completely separate individual and put her soul in the hands of others. Thanks for giving a crap about me. I don't really give a crap about myself, so it's nice that someone does. That leap of faith is ultimately what The Good Place thinks leads to being a better and more fulfilled person. There's greater happiness waiting for you if you form bonds with other people. And finally, Eleanor realizes the last piece of business she must complete before she goes, helping Michael get the one thing he really wants, a human life on Earth. I'm gonna be... A real boy, Pinocchio. true joy is in the mystery. By the end of the finale, there's only one mystery left. What do you think happens when people walk through the door? It's the only thing in the universe I don't know. Notably, we don't see what happens when Chidi and Jason walk through the door. Instead, we cut back to Janet, watching. Michael Shore's other shows, The Office, Parks and Rec, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, are workplace sitcoms. But The Good Place was inspired by a different sort of TV show, Lost. 
Lost was built on a series of mysteries and invited the viewer to play detective, formulating theories and trying to figure out what was really happening. Lost has been enormously influential for a generation of TV series trying to emulate its narrative shell game. And for most of The Good Place, there were plenty of surprise reveals and cliffhangers that kept fans hooked. The show eventually trained viewers to expect there was more going on than meets the eye. Oh, it looks like paradise. But it's actually a filthy dumpster full of our worst anxieties. The ultimate solution to Lost's mysteries was about connections with other people. This is a place that you, that you all made together so that you could find one another. Likewise, in the end, we don't learn much more about the committee that ran The Good Place, or about Jen the Judge, or about who was really pulling the strings. Instead, everything in The Good Place comes down to the value of forming loving connections with others. That's not what saved you. It was your friendship. Yeah, no, I got it. Lost also ended by gesturing toward the ultimate mystery, what happens when we die. Not late. Moving on. And even though The Good Place starts by telling us that there is an afterlife, it ends by revealing that it's really just postponed that question. Where do we go next? I won't exactly know what's going to happen after I die. Nothing more human than that. Besides texting people that you're five minutes away when you haven't even left the house. But remember, Shor loves giving closure to his characters. When all is said and done, Eleanor walks through the door, and unlike in Lost, we do get a final answer. Eleanor dissolves into pieces of light spread throughout the fabric of the universe. One of those pieces that was once Eleanor finds its way to Earth, where it turns out to be a conscience. Like a little voice in your head helping you become a better version of yourself. The piece helps a man decide to go out of his way to give Michael a mistakenly delivered piece of junk mail from Coyote Joe's, allowing Michael to live out a couple of his fantasies of being human. I wanted to get a rewards card, any rewards card. I, I wanted to talk briefly to someone and then say, take it sleazy. And with all the love in my heart and all the wisdom of the universe, Take it sleazy. This one last small good deed rounds out the show, referencing one of Eleanor's earlier good deeds on Earth, returning a lost wallet. Me trying just a little bit put some good out into the world. Faced with a big and unknowable question, sure can't help falling back on the central idea of the good place, that we are here in large part to help make each other better. They all got better because they helped each other. Even though almost all the events of The Good Place happen in the afterlife, the show ends here, on Earth. What happens to the deceased is ultimately less important than how they can impact us as the better angels of our nature. The Good Place has always had ethics on the brain. In its purest form, the show has been about people figuring out if they could become better by working hard. I don't know about you guys, but I am definitely the best version of myself. Chidi's work and the series as a whole were inspired by Shore's interest in ethics as an academic concept. I will go anywhere at any time to talk to a large group of people about moral philosophy. Uh, Chidi references the work of many different philosophers over the course of the show. Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, Diogenes. It was like the Avengers, but for super thinkers. And especially strives to live up to the rigid ideals of Immanuel Kant, whose categorical imperative requires us to do what's right, regardless of results, intentions, or extenuating circumstances. Let's say you, you promised your friend you'd go to the movie movies. But then your mom suddenly gets rushed to the ER. Your boy Kant would say, never break a promise. Go see Chronicles of Riddick. But the most influential by far is Tim Scanlon, a retired professor of philosophy at Harvard, best known for his 1998 book, What We Owe to Each Other. The first time Michael reboots the neighborhood, a brain-wiped Eleanor leaves a note for herself in her copy, allowing the humans to remember that they're in the bad place. This text lays out an ethical theory of contractualism that, broadly speaking, everyone should live by rules that every reasonable person can agree to. Imagine a group of reasonable people are coming up with the rules for a new society, but anyone can veto any rule that they think is unfair. 
Throughout the series, that basic principle has undergirded the character's approach to ethics. Rather than enforcing hard and fast bans like no lying, they try to use common sense to figure out the best working set of imperfect rules. As the last line of What We Owe to Each Other puts it, Working out the terms of moral justification is an unending task. The ideas in the book and the book itself are, it's the spine, wouldn't you say? It's sort of the spine of the whole show. The Good Place emphasizes that as valuable as the study of ethics is, the mere act of thinking is not enough. The best version of me is just as much about my effect on the world around me as it is about my own egocentric self-image. Chidi is initially sent to the bad place because trying to make the right decision traps him into making no decision at all. You hurt everyone in your life with your rigidity and your indecisiveness. Every friend, every girlfriend was driven nuts because I couldn't do anything. For The Good Place, the abstract argumentation is less important than living it and making real decisions. I made the trolley problem real so we could see how the ethics would actually play out. When she's rebooted, Eleanor needs to find Chidi, because every time she does, their connection helps her not only learn, but internalize the lessons of ethics. It's only when the act of studying is combined with the process of relating to others that we become better. You've been our teacher this whole time, and we are much better because of you. Figuring out the right thing to do is also only meaningful when it's done by mortals with a finite sense of time. If, if you live forever, then ethics don't matter to you because basically there's no consequences for your actions. You tell a lie, who cares? Wait a few trillion years, the guilt will fade. The stakes of ethics come from death, a concept elucidated by the Good Place philosophical consultant Todd May when he writes in his book, Death. Quote, Mortality offers meaning to our lives, and morality helps navigate that meaning. Wait, what I think it says is that mortality offers meaning to the events of our lives. Look, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right since it's like my book. This isn't the first time the end of a TV show has also focused on the ends of its characters' lives. But The Good Place zooms in to focus on the finitude of death as meaningful. When each member of the team is ready to leave The Good Place, they describe a sense of calm, of knowing they've done enough to finish being part of the world. I just suddenly had this calm feeling, like the air inside my lungs was the same as the air outside my body. I feel complete. I have the same feeling that the others described, a, a kind of quietude. In my soul. Ultimately, like the rest of The Good Place, this view of death is deeply optimistic. And though Chidi has primarily drawn on the Western philosophical tradition, when confronted with the end, he turns to Buddhism and imagines his own existence as something that naturally ends or changes. Picture a wave in the ocean, and then it crashes on the shore, and it's gone. But the water is still there. Ultimately, The Good Place suggests philosophy can only go so far. There are no fixed rules that work in every situation. Its final insight is that image of the wave. Not an analytical argument, but a way to contemplate what it's like for each individual person to be. The wave was just a, a different wave of the water to be for a little while. None of us can really know for sure what happens when we die. The Good Place took a risk by starting off with one potential answer and then undermining it at every turn. Every action by every human on Earth is recorded and then sent here to be assigned a point value based on the absolute moral worth of that action. Hundreds of millions of people have been wrongly condemned to a, an eternity of torture. Whatever the truth might be, the show suggests that no matter what, it's more important to focus on on being a good person while you're alive. The real question, Eleanor, is what do we owe to each other? And according to The Good Place, being a good person might be about just continuing to do your best. As Shore put it in an interview post-finale with Entertainment Weekly, quote, we were arguing for trying. I mean, why not try? It's better than not trying, right? Is that a definitive answer to the questions of the universe? No, but it's a start. A calm has washed over me. Blah, blah, blah. Goodbye. Hi, everyone. I'm Susanna. And I'm Deborah. 
and you're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe.